In this course, you'll be treated as junior statisticians as you group together to design and implement an entire data gathering and statistical analysis project that's going to be broken down into a pre-project report and three smaller sub-projects, one, two, and three. The main goal in this project are for your group to successfully design and implement a survey, first of all, and then to organize, analyze, and present the gathered data. You need to be unique and be creative in your survey design and in your questions. You can ask any question you want of your audience as long as your participants are adults and all of your questions are not of a sensitive nature. The best projects are those where groups ask questions that they really care about and that they really want to know the answers to. As soon as absolutely possible, you'll want to choose your five to seven group members because within the first week of class, you have a pre-project report due. So find five to seven compatible students and either enroll yourself in a group by going to the Groups tab in D2L or email me all of your group members and I can enroll for you. Your grade for the project very strongly depends on all of your group members, so it is extremely important to choose your group members well. I will first grade the projects and then once you've gotten a group grade for all of the effort of every team member, I will multiply that by an individual factor, but your grade will very much depend on how well the entire group has done, so it is critical to choose and choose well. So, once I have the group grade, there will be an individual factor that I'll multiply that group grade by to get the grade that's actually recorded for you and used in your grade calculations. So, to discover that individual factor, it depends on several things. First of all, how much of the report you actually did and how well you did it, and that's probably the strongest factor that's available. And then the second thing is feedback and editing. So once all of your group members have turned in their report, how much feedback did you give them? And was it significant feedback? And did you edit for them? And did you make significant improvements to the project? And then third of all, your group participation and how well you got along. And this will be evidenced by turning in peer reviews and by the peer reviews that your peers did for you. So I will look at that and see how well you got along with your group and how well you interacted, how much you participated, how available you were, how good a group member you were essentially. So all of those things will go into your group grade as will turning in an actual peer review. So it's very important to get those peer reviews from people so that I know how well everybody participated. Group work is extremely essential to employers. It's one of the most sought after gifts, but group work is really hard to do and to do well. So when you're doing group work, you've got to be sure that you are pulling your fair share. You are giving your very best work to the entire group because it's really incredibly frustrating to have a group member who's not. So please be considerate of your group member and do your very best work for the group. Number two, be flexible and patient with your peers. It takes a lot more effort and energy to work with someone, to work with several people than you might think. So please, please, in everything that you do, exercise as much flexibility and patience with your peers as you absolutely can. Your peers have other obligations, they have other things that are going on, so please be flexible and patient as much as possible. And number three, be sure that you make any deadlines that are set by your group or your group leader or any project deadlines. It's absolutely critical that you complete group work on time because it can be very, very frustrating if you're trying to do a group project and you're depending on work to be done and it's not done when you expect it to be done. As a matter of fact, I encourage group members to remove any members that aren't turning work in on time. Absolutely 
be a good group member so that you do not get removed from a group. And then the first thing that you're going to turn in is the pre-project report. And so for the pre-project report, you'll want several things that are listed in the report. You will give me a list of all of your group members and you'll tell me who you've decided to make the group leader and the group leader will end up assigning the other roles and tasks in projects one, two, and three. And then number two, you need to give me a meeting description. So you need to tell me when your group met and for how long and the details on that and you can find all of these details in the project pre-project report description. Number three, you need to tell me who, when, where, and how you're surveying. So be sure that you give me all of those details, exactly what people you're going to be surveying. Is it only females? Is it only soldiers? Is it everyone who is an adult? You do need to survey only adults. So I will look for in the who that you have at least said every adult or uh, every adult male, that sort of thing. And then you need to tell me when, and this is date and time. So Saturday, November, whatever, and exactly what time. And then you need to tell me exactly where. Is it at the PX? Is it at a local Starbucks? Is it at the mall? Is it at Walmart? That sort of thing. And then you need to tell me how. So how did you collect this data? We want all of the questions to be in keeping with data gathering techniques that we really learn a lot about in Chapter 4. But let me just say here that it's extremely important that you choose randomly. So if you try to survey your friends, that's not a random sample. If you try to email people that you know, that's not a random sample. If you try to do a questionnaire on Facebook, that's not a random sample. The only really good way to get a random sample is to go to a location that you know almost everyone in your population frequents. So if your population is everyone on Fort Campbell Base, then go to some location on Fort Campbell Base like the PX and stand there and you will get a sort of random, as random as we can, uh, survey of the population. And then number four, I want you to actually list your five questions. What questions are you going to ask? Two of your questions need to have quantitative answers. So what is your age? How many children do you have? How many Harry Potter books have you read? Anything that has a number answer will be a quantitative question. And then at least one of your questions needs to be categorical. So at least two quantitative and at least one categorical. And a categorical answer is anything that's basically not a number. Anything that fits into a category. So you can ask, are you a fan of Harry Potter books? Or uh, what is your favorite novel that you've ever read? That sort of thing would be a categorical question. I alluded to this earlier that you needed to meet for your pre-project report. You actually will need to meet with your group four different times during this course online. Once for the pre-project report, once for project one, once for project two, and once for project three. And you can just use any sort of online software like Skype or Blackboard Instant Messenger or Yahoo whatever your group agrees on, and then do a voice chat or a video chat or a phone conference and talk to each other. During the pre-project report, you're going to decide on your questions and you're going to decide on who the group leader is. During the projects one, two, and three meetings, you're going to already have your group members turned in their portions of the report, and you're going to discuss what you think needs to be changed. So you'll probably be grading these by the rubric, and you'll try to make edits and changes to them and agree on those collectively when you meet in a virtual sense online. When you turn in the pre-project report, or any of the reports for that matter, any submission in the Dropbox, D2L is set up so that it only keeps the most recent submission. So if you want to make changes, you can submit another report, but keep in mind, 
I will only be able to see the most recent document that's in D2L. Once you've completed your pre-project report, you'll want to put that report in the Dropbox. So you'll go to click on the Dropbox, and then you'll click on whichever report you're trying to drop it into. So in this case, you'll click on Pre-project report, and then you will want to click Add a file so that you can add your file to the group. And you'll also want to see the instructions here and read these in detail and make sure you've covered every single thing because that's how I will grade it to make sure every single thing that was asked for has been given. So when you submit, be sure to read all those instructions and make sure that you really have answered every question that is asked. And then click on the Add a File button. and then click browse and select your file that you're trying to add so select the pre-project report file underscore your group name open upload and then submit you do have to click open upload and submit you can add a description if you want but be sure both upload and submit are clicked and then you will get a receipt in your email so you can click on email and it will give you a receipt saying that yes you have submitted to your Dropbox you can go back to the Dropbox and click on submissions it should say one there and then you can actually view the file and make sure that the file you thought you uploaded is the file that was actually uploaded and check to be sure that it has all of the elements that were asked for so that you get a perfect grade. And then it will take me 24 hours to give you feedback after the due date and I will give you feedback and you can go and conduct your surveys.